had a good lunch and are filled in the stomach. Uh, my name is Kenneth, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, Data Lake Analytics and Data Lake Store, uh, which I will call Big Data for Microsoft Developers. Um, my name is, of course, Kenneth Nielsen. I've been working with the SQL Server since 99. Uh, I'm a co-organizer of SQL Saturday in Denmark and a co-organizer of the SQL Nexus conference in Copenhagen as well, uh, which we are having in, um, in May this year. Currently, I'm working at Microsoft as a data solution architect focusing on Azure and only Azure. Uh, so everything in regards to data on, on, my, on Azure is um, my domain. It could be IoT, it could be a data lake store, SQL Server, or document DB, or what, what have you. Um, you can always reach me at my email or my Twitter account, and I block from time to time. So the agenda for today will be about Azure Data Lake. I will give you a, a sh short and quick overview. Then we'll uh, jump into the store and the analytics, how we can use it by uh, using Visual Studio, how we can do it in PowerShell, and then we have the new uh, cognitive analysis services that we have in, um, in use SQL as well. And then a Q&A session if you, if you have any questions. So let's get started. The overview. Well, Data Lake Store and Data Lake Analytics comes from a tool that Microsoft developed for internal use called Cosmos, where we needed, um, we, had, we have this um, search engine called Bing, if you know. <laughs> Not many uses it, but uh, we have it. And we needed to, um, to, to analyze a lot of data each night, so we do that uh, using Cosmos. And we've been working on it for f quite some time in, in, um, in inside of Microsoft. And now we commercialize the, um, the Cosmos engine uh, and, you, and up using it uh, on Azure uh, for Azure Data Lake and Analytics. So it's, um, it's a technology that uh, has a few years um, on, on the back. So it, it performs really good. Um, <coughs> So how did we do it, and what is Data Lake Store or Data Lake? Well, Data Lake is a combined of two things. First and foremost, we have the, um, the store underneath, which is based on HDFS, uh, which is the uh, Hadoop file system um, underneath. And then we have the, uh, the Yarn um, job scheduler on top of that. And we can do analytics with a new uh, language that we call USQL. Uh, which is a combination of C Sharp and T SQL. But you can also do HD Insight on top of your, <coughs> sorry, Data Lake Store. So depending on your skill sets, if you're a C Sharp programmer or T SQL programmer, or you're more into uh, Hive jobs and, uh, and Java, then you can choose HD Insight if you want that, or jump on the USQL uh, train. So that's, um, that's why I call it uh, Big Data for Microsoft Developers, because we have a very a uh, very um, flat learning curve if you're, if you're familiar with the T-SQL and uh, C-sharp. So that's a little bit about Data Lake. And um, of course, uh, it's a managed service on Microsoft, so you just spin it up and provision it. You don't need to worry about patching and, uh, and, and so forth, uh, as you do uh, if, if it's uh, running in, inside your uh, data center in the basement. So we take care of that for you. So Data Lake Store. It's a, in my opinion, Data Lake Store is more or less taking your sand from the basement and putting it into the cloud. You can have trillions of objects inside Data Lake Store and the file sizes, <coughs> sorry, and the file sizes can be any, any size. You can go up to petabyte size if you want to. Um, of course, you need to, to make a, um, a planning for having those big files in, in a Data Lake Store. So you, what you do when you read in a big file in, in Data Lake Store, you, you mostly partition in, uh, the, the file. So we can work on it uh, with the analytics afterwards. So. We also have uh, encryption at rest. So if you're worried about your data is uh, encrypted or secured, then uh, you, can, you can put in a uh, encryption key, 
uh, one by default by Azure Data Lake Store, or you can have your own key that you can store in a key vault store okay. if you want to. Um, and of course, the, the Data Lake Store is, is optimized for performance so that we can uh, do analytics on massive amounts of data if we want to. So, and of course, you can, we, we have enterprise-ready access control, meaning that you can put uh, access control list on every object folders in, inside Data Lake Store. So you can, you can uh, say that certain people or certain roles from the Active Directory have access to a folder or a file if you want to. So, and you can have any data in any, any format. So you can have um, CSV files or you can have movies or... Twitter feeds or anything that you want to have in, inside Data Lake Store, you can have. Uh, you can have unstructured data, semi-structured or structured. Um, and when I when I tend to talk about unstructured data, I put in a question mark because do we really have unstructured data? I think there's structure in any data, but when you when you put in lots of different data formats in a store, then you got unstructured data sort of, because you can have a, a, a TIFF file and a PDF file and um, a, a JSON file or a CSV file, and then it's uh, kind of unstructured as it lay in, in the data store. But we can, we can manage any data if you want to in that data lake store. This one should have been hidden. Sorry, I already shown that. It's um, just how we build it. So we have the storage uh, engine uh, underneath, and then the analytics on top. So, and um, it's HDF, HDFS for the cloud, meaning that it's the uh, Hadoop file systems that we uh, we built from the scratch uh, and put it in in Azure. And as I said, it it uh, integrates into HD Insight, Hortonworks, and Cla Cloudera, or any other um, big data uh, solutions that you want, and and can read from, from uh, the data lake uh, store. So, and as any uh, ordinary uh, file system or SAN, you can have operations uh, and, uh, on, on folder objects and file objects. So you can do a delete and, and move and, and copy and so forth on, on all objects in, inside data lake store. And there will be um, aud auditing as well on on every uh, operations uh, in inside Data Lake Store, so and we have unlimited storage. Um, if if for instance that you have a lot of data and the data center will be uh, <laughs> reaching the bar, I believe that we will ship some more uh, containers with the uh, hard drives. So and there's no limit. There's no limits to to the scale, as I said. So if you really have big uh, big files, uh, petabytes, just move it up. I think the, the most challenging, challenging uh, task in, in this scenario would be actually moving the files from your on-prem system into Azure Data Lake. Um, but we have solutions for that as well. You can ship a hard, hard disk drive from your data center into to Azure Data Center as well. So, as I mentioned, uh, we have security. It's a, it's a very secure uh, setup for, for, for the Data Lake store. Um, the data will be uh, encrypted. Uh, you can have encryption uh, on-prem where you work with your data, and it will be encrypted uh, while we're transferring uh, using SSL, and and then uh, using the encryption key at rest as well. So, so that's how we secure your data. We have uh, full integration into Active uh, Directory. So if you already have a, a setup in your Active Directory, then you can do the role-based um, uh, security on Data Lake Store as well. Um, so it's a bit too small, but oh. Um, and of course, we have the fine-grained POSIX uh, active control list on any objects. Um, and that meaning that, that you can set in a, um, a very fine-grained uh, security, saying that this person or this role have access to this file and this folder, uh, or, or the root file uh, path, if you want to, and everything is audited. So, 
Uh, even even uh, when you're accessing the uh, the files and the folders, uh, we have auditing, and also on configuration changes. So even when the users are, are using it, or the administrator are using it. So. Yeah. So if we jump into uh, data lake analytics, this is um, the analytics service that, that we built uh, on top of Yarn. And, and as, um, as we do on the big files where we're partitioning uh, the files into a, a partition file system uh, on Data Lake Store, then we, when we process uh, those data, data we will um, partition the workloads into different work no compute nodes. So it's, um, it's an it's a analytics service that runs in parallel, and you can request um, up to 100 for the moment um, parallel uh, nodes running. Um, but do, do look at your workload and, and say, don't just use uh, a parallelism of, say, 25 when your workload only um, needs 10 or 15, for example, because you are paying for, for the workload uh, when you're spinning them up. So, um, and when you do this uh, analytics, uh, you can do it by using the, the USQL, which is, um, which is a, a new uh, language that uh, is uh, developed from Microsoft. And, and we have taken all the, the familiar, or the syntax from, from T SQL and uh, C Sharp, and we build it uh, together. So, so you should be able to, to get started on your T SQL or your U SQL very fast uh, when, you, when you start on, on working on the uh, data lake analytics. So, we have, um, of course, we have all the uh, the, the, the features from C Sharp, so you can do uh, a new, uh, s if you're not happy with the way that string are returned in, in C Sharp, for instance, then you can do your own uh, uh, version of, of string uh, return in, in a code behind file on that uh, use SQL scripts if you want to. And, and the query is uh, distributed all over the data that, that you're working on. So, in USQL, as you can see, we have a select from, or we can have select from where, group by, join, and over, and, and other um, functions as well. And, and you can do it both on unstructured and structured data, and we have a relational meta model on, on top of that. So all your, all your metadata on your USQL and your jobs or analytics are stored in a meta model, a metadata model on, on Azure Data Lake Store. And then, as I mentioned, you can have uh, um, functions and joins and aggregators from uh, .NET or C Sharp in your um, USQL script as well. So when you, when you download the Azure Data Lake Analytics SDK from, from, uh, from the website, you will have a, a, a few um, extractors and outputters uh, from, from the uh, SDK. But if you have a proprietary format, uh, for instance, uh, from, from one of your applications that are not supported, then you can write your own um, uh, extractor and output for that format and, and get started on that. And of course, you can use uh, any functions from, from C Sharp if you want to, or you can write your own. So, so what can we do now in terms of uh, use SQL? Well, we can do batch. So if I have a use SQL script for now, I can, I can execute it on Azure, and then it's, uh, it's getting queued, and when the resources are ready, you will get your analytics uh, executed. Um, it might, might get interactive um, uh, later on, uh, and streaming and machine learning will be um, in the future. Actually, machine learning, I think, the, the, what we mean here by having machine learning is having machine learning executing use SQL scripts in in the in the process because you can all for now you can you can actually instantiate um, um, Python and R from from use SQL 
uh, and using that in, in your analytics. So it's the other way around. But for now, it's, it's only a batch uh, execution. So, and we support almost uh, any sources from Azure. You can read from the data lake store, you can read from blob uh, storage, uh, da database and, and data warehouse, uh, and you can even read from a database inside a virtual machine running on Azure if you want to. Um, Of course, you can't you can write back to the to the databases because they have to maintain integ integrity um, in the uh, database system. So, but you can write into uh, Data Lake Store and 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 the uh, Blob Storage if you want to. So, if we take a look at uh, how we do use SQL, um, if we have a look at at how we built a use SQL script. Uh, we first define a, a row set here, and then we have our schema as we define it when we read the, uh, the data from, in this instance, from a Twitter history uh, a CSV file using the extractor uh, CSV. So now we have our, all our data inside this variable, um, T, and then we can select from, from that um, data set, and we select the result where we select the author and then how many tweets that author have uh, from that uh, data set. And then we output it into a new uh, CSV file. So when you, when you do analytics on, on a data lake, everything is read in, in into a data set and when you output it, it's output into a file uh, in the file system on data lake store. So, <coughs> and you can, you can, as I mentioned, use uh, any .NET R and Python if you want to, and you can even um, use the cognitive services that uh, Microsoft has in, in regards to face recognition and emotions and uh, OCR of images and, and, and so forth. So, so it, basically if, if you're into uh, T SQL and C Sharp, this should be, be fairly easy to get started on. Um, it's, um, even I can do it, so. <laughs> So this is, um, this is what we do, we have a row set, then we apply the schema while we're reading it, and this is from a file in the data lake, and um, we only have, a, we have a, the, the extractor, where we can do a, a text reading from, uh, from tabular separated file, or, or comma separated files, for instance, and then we write it out, as I said, so. And, and I think one of the, the key features here is that we do, we apply the schema on read. So you don't have to apply a schema as in, in a traditional uh, data warehousing solution where you have a very um, a fixed schema that you read data into. Uh, for instance, a, a customer staging table has a very fixed way of uh, um, having a, a schema applied. Here we can just, we, if, we don't, if we don't need the customer, just leave it out, or if you have a, a few other um, attributes in the file, just apply it uh, if you need it. So, <coughs> and um, when we compile our use SQL um, in in the um, in the data center, we send the use SQL script, and we do it. We do a com compilation and an optimization, and then it will be. Output it into the uh, the output folder, the job folder running in inside the data center, and we have, of course, we have the C sharp will be compiled into a managed DLO, and the C plus plus into an unmanaged DLO, and then we can have some algebra on top of that doing doing um, multiplications or summa summation or, or anything else, and then other files, and then we deploy each file is deployed to one vertices, and a vertices is um, that's, that's how we do parallelism. So if we look at the next slide, we will have the U SQL, and one square here is a vertices or a vertex. Um, so this will be, if we have, say, we have here uh, 20, 20 vertexes, and it could be a file of 20 uh, gigabytes, and 
each vertex will be uh, containing one gigabyte of data, and then we will put it into the um, the execution and and do that. Um, so, if, for instance, here I have um, in this uh, in this uh, query plan we have 4,002 vertices, and they are running for 40 40 seconds and are reading approximately how many numbers? Two twenty two and a half million rows, and then we do some aggregation and and so forth. Uh, I have an I have actually a demo where I I will show you how this is uh, running in the in the job uh, plan. So if we request a parallelism of one, then we might have um, five or ten uh, vertexes, but I can only run one at a time, and that's the blue one that's running right now. The green one is f the greens are finished. If I request for for instance uh, a parallelism of four, then we reserve enough to do four vertices at a time. So if you, if you look at your work plan or your query plan, then you can do some estimation on how many vertices I will have to, um, to request, uh, or uh, how, how much parallelism I have to request at the time uh, for execution. So the next slide here is the, the query life. Query life of a USQL script, you have the you can do your USQL in, in Visual Studio or from PowerShell, for instance, and then you, you submit your USQL script into a job scheduler and a queue, then it gets, com getting, it gets compiled, it gets optimized, and then we have the vertex scheduling doing the, the, the um, partitioning and parallelism of the, of the job and the query, and then we have the runtime, and then you have the output uh, either into uh, or the output file into the portal, or you can download it by using PowerShell, for instance. Um, and I would recommend using PowerShell for much of the many of these tasks because using the portal, um, well, that's pretty tedious. <laughs> just to to say it very kind. Um, so here we have one stage. That's uh, one stage in our query plan, and we have 252 pieces of work. That's the vertices. Then we have the average uh, execution time for one vertex and how many rows we read uh, in total, 4.3 billion. And then we have uh, how many data we, we read, uh, read and wrote to, to disk in, inside uh, data lake. Um, so, this is just one part of a large query plan, and I will have uh, I will show you a, a real qu query plan here later. And the the way we do the way we do um, the parallelism, each uh, each vertex is executed on a ADLAU, which is a small virtual machine with more, two cores and six gigabyte of memory. So if you have, uh, for instance, uh, a, if you request 25 uh, in parallelism, you will have 25 virtual machines running. And it's just uh, being instantiated without you doing anything. Uh, the, the service will just spin them up and do the execution of your script and then spin them down uh, when the execution is, is finished. So you don't have to worry about um, did my virtual machine run correctly or did it uh, fail or, or anything. Sometimes a virtual machine might fail, but we will spin a new one up. And, and you can see it actually in your query plan. Sometimes a vertices will go into orange, I believe, and then that could be because of a virtual machine didn't, didn't start correctly, and then there, there will be a new virtual machine uh, uh, provisioned for you. But it's, it's totally transparent for you. You don't have to, to worry about it. It's um, done by, by the service. So I think I actually covered this. But this is, uh, this is how you, you actually see uh, the execution in, for instance, Visual Studio. Um, you will see 
it's being uh, prepared, compiled, queued, and scheduled, and, and so forth, and running, and then ended. Um, so, I briefly mentioned this, that uh, why a, a job is not getting queued. It might be um, because of uh, um, allocation or, or shortage of ADLUs in the data center, but I've actually never uh, experience that. Sometimes a job can be too 13 or uh, 30 or 60 seconds in, in a queue or before it's getting queued. But I've never, sorry, I've never seen uh, one of my um, analytics scripts not getting queued. So, so and, and bear in mind, um, analytics, uh, data lake store and uh, analytics are only inside two data centers for now and not in Europe. So if you have customers that want to use uh, data lakes uh, in, inside of uh, European Union, for instance, because of the Data Protection Act, then it will be uh, in, in GA in, in Europe in a few months. That's <laughs> the nearest I can get. It's been delayed since January last year, and we had the, um, the product group saying, oh, it will be ready next, uh, next month, and then the next month and next month, December, or so. Um, but now we are in, in GA in, in the US and it will shortly be in, in Europe as well. So let's jump into Visual Studio and, and look how we can do uh, data lake analytics uh, inside of that. So when you have installed the, uh, the SDK from, uh, from, uh, from Microsoft, then you will have, um, when, you, when you create a new project, you will have the uh, the USQL project type, and you can have a, a USQL project or sample project. There are a few sample data sets uh, when, you, when you install this one. Uh, it's uh, with a web log data set and a uh, ambulance dispatch uh, data sets, I believe. Um, not that much data. It's only uh, two or three or four uh, kilobytes of data worth. Um, then you have uh, a class library um, that you can do, and a unit test project and a unit test sample project, so you can get started on, on that. So, and it's just ordinary uh, Visual Studio project. So, and we have a uh, integration into Solution Explorer, so you can see a, we have the, um, the project file here, and then we have a script file, and we have the code behind file. And if you want to extend, for instance, the string, uh, um, function in inside uh, C Sharp, you can just do it in, in the in the code behind file. For instance, if you want all strings to be returned in lowercase, just uh, overwrite the string uh, function in in the code behind file. So you can even um, monitor and manage your job inside uh, Visual Studio. You have the job browser uh, that you can uh, look at at which jobs are being queued, which are running, and, and which failed, and, and so forth. And you can, you can, you can uh, browse your data, store, data lake store as well. So you have a, a full um, uh, file explorer inside Visual Studio if you want to. Um, but again, if you want to upload files, use PowerShell. That's uh, my advice um, for that. So when we're creating USQL, inside Visual Studio. You will have uh, full IntelliSense for all functions uh, that are supported for, for USQL. So you can just start typing and, uh, and, and all functions that are supported will be, be show up as an, as an ordinary uh, uh, IntelliSense in, inside uh, Visual Studio. So, and all of these are, of course, very simple uh, USQL uh, sample scripts, but um, it should be uh, fairly easy. So this uh, I've mentioned, where we do a code behind file and then we we uh, return strings to uppercase instead of uh, just how it appears in the text. So that's quite easy as well, and and you can do that as well for 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 instance for the extractor. You can write your own extractor if you want to. Instead of the uh, so, uh, this extractor TSV, you can have your own. 
And so. so when we have a analytics job running, you will see that it's getting prepared and it's getting queued and running and finalizing. And on each step, you can see information about uh, the step. And when it's running in this, uh, in this uh, part of the execution, you will see in inside Visual Studio, that is, uh, you will see the, the different uh, parts of the query plan um, either being grayed out or uh, being green or half green, how f uh, depending on how, f how, how far we are in the execution. Um, and um, when, when the execution is ready, all of the parts, uh, all of the, uh, the, the stages will be green. Um, and if you want to, you can look at, at the, um, as we say here, you can you can actually look at at how how well we utilize the the, the degree of parallelism. So you can see should I should I turn it up and and execute for for a shorter time of of execution, or should I turn it down and 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 use all of the the nodes instead of having two or three nodes doing nothing. Um, all of that you can see inside Visual Studio in the optimization um, pane, and and you can even take the execution and if you load the profile, you can replay it just for, well, I don't know why, it's a, it's a gimmick in my opinion. Um, so let's jump into Visual Studio and, and work a bit on it. So as you can see over here, I have my uh, Cloud Explorer and I'm connected to my data lake analytics and my data lake store. Uh, and I have a few. I have one here called um, MS Cloud Summit Store. And if I want to look at it inside uh, Visual Studio, I right click and then I open File Explorer. You know, it's already open, so I can have a look here. I have my metadata catalog here. Uh, I have a folder that I created uh, called Paris where I have uh, a lot of files, uh, JPEGs and, and an output folder. Then the sample um, folder is, uh, that's a sample that you can create when you provision your data lake store inside the Azure portal. Um, and also the USQL extension, that's the a new advanced analytics extension that you can can copy in, into your um, data lake store when you provision it or afterwards. Um, if you want to, to do um, Python or R or use the uh, cognitive services, then you, then you would ne need the uh, USQL extension um, for that purpose. But I can, uh, I can jump into my Paris folder and uh, I can right click in the folder pane or the file, uh, the file pane and I can upload a file and select the file if I want to. And I can see that it's uh, uploading down here. I can even, uh, I, can, I can download all these files if I want to or I can delete it I, if, if I want to. Um, so that's, a, that's a f the file system that you're using uh, in, inside the um, uh, data lake store in Visual Studio. So if I want to create a, a, um, a file inside my project, oh, I haven't got that project open. I'll just get that open, this one. Sorry for that. So this is a USQL sample. Uh, application and that's the one from uh, from the sample that you you can uh, install uh, from the SDK. So if I were to look at this script here, uh, that's the script that I showed in, um, or more or less the script that I showed in 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 the in the file in, in the PowerPoint. You can see that I I have my search log uh, row set here and I read some data into it from a a TSV file, and then I'll, I'll put it into a CSV file in, inside uh, um, the data lake store. So if I were to execute this one, I can actually execute it in my local or on my local laptop, but I want to do it on, on the, um, the data or the, um, 
the um, data lake analytics store or data lake store that I have provisioned. So I have to select, select the, the right one up here in, in where I am, I am executing it. Um, so hopefully this should be working because the sample data should be up there. Just, yeah, yeah. So I can, I can submit it and then uh, I will submit it with some default um, uh, properties on, on, uh, on the um, analytics. Or I can, I can click here and, and select advanced. And then I can, sorry, I haven't got the, the zoom it on, but I, I, can, I can actually define how many parallelism it should be running in. And I think 100 might be overkill for this one, but um, let's take just one, uh, because we only have one file and the file is very small, so just submit it for one. So now we're submitting it. And as we can see here, um, the job is getting prepared inside the data lake analytics uh, account. And when it's uh, done preparing, it will be queued and run and finalized. And I think this might be a very um, too sim simple uh, execution plan to be looking at. So I will jump into another one uh, in, a, in a few seconds. So we have the, f uh, the source file and we have the, the extract uh, stage, and then we have the aggregation uh, state where we do the output, and then we have the output file. So let's jump into a another, do I have this one? No. This one. I can, I can show you one of those that uh, actually finished, um, and this one. So now we are reading all the metadata from, from this job that I executed earlier this day. And um, if I want to do the playback of how the job was executing, I need to load the profile up here in, in the right corner. And then I can click on this, sorry, this uh, play, play button down here. And then I can see how the, uh, the query executed. So up until now, up until here, we did preparation of the query, and then we are actually starting to to read data from um, from the data lake store, and then we call some services inside the cognitive services as well, um, and then up here, what we are what we're seeing is that actually this is we have 26 vertices, um, and we have actually uh, 26 images that we're doing cognitive services on, and. Here we do some um, some up recounting and, and finding objects in, in, in inside those uh, images. In this one, we are doing um, facial recognition. Is it a male or a female? Is it is is the person happy or unhappy? And then we in this one we do some um, OCR on an image, finding text in that image. And the last one is um, uh, what's that? I think it's uh, finding the age of the, the people inside that image, if it is. And then we, we do some aggregation and, and output it into uh, these files on, on Data Lake Store. So this is, this is a m more advanced uh, query plan, but still a, a rather simple one. Then we can look at the metadata operations. There's no metadata operation in, in this query. That could be if I were doing um, some, some um, manipulation on, on, on the metadata, if so. And then we have the state history, um, where we can see time timestamps for when we are preparing and when we are queuing and running and in ending the job. But the, the most um, interesting one is the uh, diagnostics. And then we can see, uh, we can click on the resource uh, usage. And as you can see up here, uh, we have the, the time and, and the uh, processes in use. So I actually, I think when I, I executed this one, I, I asked for, for 26, um, uh, a parallelism of 26, but we only use 16. So the next time I'm, I'm using uh, or executing this script, I should 
uh, scale it down into 16, for instance. Um, and then we can see how, how, how much, uh, uh, which stage are using um, uh, processes and, and so forth. And then we have the uh, usage mod mod modeler. So if I were to say I will only use 16, then it should be, then I can model uh, how, the, uh, how long the execution of the script will take and how many AUs will be in, in use for, for the scenario. Even, even when I say 16, the, the most uh, uh, AUs in, in, in use is, uh, is 13, so that's an indication on, of, of how many uh, parallel processes that you should uh, execute on, on, your, on your script. So that's very uh, quickly how you can use uh, USQL and how you can use uh, analytics inside Visual Studio. Um, so let's jump to the next one and see what we have there. So PowerShell. Um, I would uh, recommend to, to uh, install PowerShell, the Azure PowerShell, and, um, and use that for all your administration or execution of, of, uh, of um, uh, analytics job uh, and, and so forth in, uh, in Azure uh, Data Lake and, and Analytics. Um, once you uh, install your uh, PowerShell, then uh, start it as an administrator and then install uh, modules from uh, Azure Resource Manager, and then install uh, Azure Resource Manager afterwards. It will take a time, a, a short time, because it will download a lot of modules and install it afterwards if you have haven't already done it. So, and to uh, to get uh, a list of all the uh, commands that you can use inside Data Lake or Data Lake Store or Analytics you can execute this command and get a, a full list of commands that you can use in, in Data Lake Store, and the same was uh, on Analytics. If you want all the commands in, in combined, then you can just get a command, start Data Lake Store, for instance. So you can, uh, you can log into Azure. Uh, remember uh, that you need to uh, log into your Azure uh, account with your subscription, uh, otherwise your PowerShell will not be able to work on, on anything uh, in regards to Azure. Um, and then we have, for instance, if I want to list all my files in a store, then I can execute this command um, where I define a var variable uh, with my um, uh, and data lake store name, and then I get the, all the, the child items from that account from the root uh, root folder, so. And the same uh, when I want to upload or download a file, I can do that, and I can uh, do multiple uh, file upload as well if I want to. Uh, I will show you in in just a second. And we can uh, list or uh, list and submit jobs. You can you can have, if you execute the uh, get Azure uh, RM Data Lake Analytics job, then I will have a list of all the jobs that I've been uh, um, executed in my session. Uh, both the one that completed and failed and also the, those that, that are queue, queued at the moment. I can also do um, ad hoc analytics uh, jobs. So if I, have, if I want to do that or if I want to uh, have a PowerShell script that iterates over a lot of uh, scripts and injecting uh, variables into my USQL script, I can do that by um, submitting a job and then I have the script option so I can have all my USQL script inside this one, uh, and then I can name it and execute it. Or I can t upload a, um, a script from my local uh, laptop into the um, uh, Data Lake Store and execute that one. So, and these are the feature set for the moment that we can do on, on Data Lake Store, where we can create a new account, we can list accounts and move files and create files and, and so forth and get owners uh, and, and list of the access control lists. Um, and um, 
in regards to analytics, we can also create a new account and we can add data source and list data source and list uh, uh, catalog secrets if there are any um, in, in regards to the, the, the analytics. And we can update uh, uh, items and, and list jobs and submit them and even cancel a job that's been running for too long if, if we have one. So let's jump into PowerShell. And this should be fairly easy to see. So first off, I need to log into my Azure account. to get the um, association from uh, to PowerShell uh, into Azure. So so now I'm logged into um, to Azure and there are my subscription and, and so forth. So if I want to have a list of all the files that are in my um, my Paris folder in inside MS Cloud Summit store I will execute this um, this command, and I can see all my folders. I have uh, a file and a few uh, directories as well, and I can list um, the read and write um, permissions on, for instance, on a specific file inside that folder uh, by using this script. So I can see that the user has a read write permission and the group and another one has no permission as, at all. So I can upload a file. That's not that interesting. Uh, if a file already is in place on, on your data lake store, then you need to use the force uh, parameter to overwrite the, the file um, in the data lake store. So I can create a new folder if I want to. Uh, let's see if I already got that one. I think that's already up there. But I could create a new folder, and if I have a lot of files that I want to upload, I will just uh, iterate over those uh, uh, files in, in my file system, and it should be uploading the files one by one. So I will just stop this one, and then I can download a file. Well, just as uh, uploading, I can download the file to my to my um, laptop. So, and if I want to look at all the jobs that I have created uh, today and I have executed, then um, get Azure RM Data Lake Analytics job and uh, my account and then my submitter. So we can have different submitter of a job inside Data Lake Analytics and, and now it's, it's, uh, it's under my account. And uh, I have had a few. Uh, some succeeded, some failed, um, but most of them succeeded. <laughs> um, so, as I said uh, before on, on the previous slide, you can actually submit a job uh, to Data Lake Analytics where you have the script inside um, your PowerShell, and I would, if I wanted to, I could inject um, variables from, from PowerShell into that script. Um, but now this, uh, this script here is a, it's actually calling Python uh, from uh, uSQL. So if I submit this job, I would get a result set where we're looking at um, um, what's called leaves from a flower and doing uh, some an analytics, an analytics on that one. So well that's just to show you. I won't execute it because it takes a time. Um, but I can also if I have a, a script, as I said, uh, on, my, on my folder on my laptop, I can upload that and execute it uh, uh, instantly. So, so now I've uploaded an um, a analytics job, uh, which is called uh, Cognitive Images Single Run and I want to run it uh, in, in parallel of 26, and the job name should be single run images. So if I scroll up to, to the, um, the list of, of jobs, it should be here. 
I should be able to find it here in my list, either as a queued uh, job or a succeeded job. Um, so that you can do in PowerShell as well. So let's see what we have on the next one. So cognitive services inside USQL. Um, some of the scripts that I created here or, or are showing you is actually for, for uh, the cognitive services on Azure, uh, the image API and the facial, facial recognition API and, and so forth. And to use those, you need to go into the, um, the portal and on your analytics, uh, your analytics account in the portal, you need to click on the sample scripts and then you will get this screen here and then you will click on more and then install USQL extensions. And of course, okay. And then you will get these files and, and folders uh, installed into your uh, Azure um, uh, or your in, into your data lake uh, store. And maybe um, I made a mistake first when I used it. Um, I just jumped in and uh, executed the, the, uh, the scripts for, uh, for the cognitive services and I get an error because you need to register uh, all the uh, assemblies beforehand. So you can either uh, register the cognitive assembly or the Python or the R assembly or you, you can actually register all uh, in one uh, uh, script. And it's it's just an uh, USQL script that you you uh, open in Visual Studio or by PowerShell and execute it in your uh, analytics account if you want to. So this is for the uh, uh, image, uh, and this is for how we how sorry this is uh, an example of how you can uh, register uh, the cognitive services. Um, uh, DLLs and assemblies. So, if I want to use those uh, services in my use SQL, I have to reference the assembly. Uh, and here we are re referencing the uh, image common, the face SDK, the image emotion, and image tagging, and how we can uh, do OCR on an image. And I have up up in up in my um, uh, data lake store, I have all the, uh, I, I have 26 images uh, with uh, people in it and, and so forth. And I do all the, um, all the uh, uh, analytics on that. So if we jump into the Visual Studio, as you can see here, what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm <coughs> loading the data from the files into a day or a row set using the new, cog the new cognitive or the, the cognitive vision image extractor, meaning that I take all the bits and bytes from that image and, and putting it into a, a record set. Then I call the um, image tagger uh, from the vision uh, service on that row set, and then I get a list of, of all the, uh, the objects that are inside an image, and then I can do it do the same for, for human faces and, and the age and gender for human faces, and then I can do the, uh, the OCR on, on those as well. And then, then we output the data into uh, output files. So the result of that could be something like this. Say, these are the, the combined um, uh, data from, from the, the images. So I've just put it into a very not that nice Power BI report, but uh, it fits the purpose. So over here we have the age and gender for, for the people inside those 26 images. And do we have one that are, well, I believe uh, George Bush might be around 67 years old and he's definitely a male. Um, then we have um, the, uh, the image where we can uh, do OCR and um, in this image, there are actually some information about a museum and some 
um, information and about us and, and so forth. It's, it needs a bit of tweaking for a better image with some better text in it, uh, if you want to. Then we have the uh, expressions. And this one, he's happy and she's happy, and that's one that's uh, neutral and so forth. And all of this information are coming from the cognitive services uh, from, from Azure and are compiled into uh, the data lake output file. So, and here we have the objects. So we can see that this is a man, uh, no, it's a person uh, standing in front of a wall and we have a man and he's posing, smiling. He has a suit and a necktie. So that's uh, pretty good. Um, so that's some of the, uh, the services that you can use in, in USQL if you want to. Um, so. That's it. And of course, there's a lot of um, resources. If you want to, to jump in, in and, and, and do um, uh, analytics, for instance, go into GitHub and, and just find all the scriptings uh, in, in the data lake analytics uh, GitHub uh, repository. All the sample scripts are there. There are uh, walkthroughs uh, that you can just step by step uh, getting started on, on data lake both stores and, and uh, analytics. So I recommend that just jump into the, um, the page from, from the documentation from, from the product group as well. Uh, we have a guy called Michael Riss. Uh, that's really, uh, he's more or less the grandfather of USQL and he's uh, doing a lot of blog posting uh, on, on the topic. So, I think that's uh, about concludes it. So, if you have any questions, uh, just shoot shoot at me. Um, and of course, remember to sign up for the SQL Nexus conference in May. And we need speakers. So, if you want to stand up on a stage like me, just uh, submit a, a session for me. Um, and thank you to all the sponsors of this event. Um, this is my first time speaking in, in, uh, in France, so that's been nice. Thanks to the sponsors. And uh, join the conversation. And of course, the most important slide of the day, do the evalu evaluation and participate in the competition of a Surface Pro 4. Thank you. <laughs>